So later this month, the Supreme Court is going to hear the case Riley versus California. Um, the issue in that case was whether certain digital material that was found on, the, on Riley's cell phone after he was arrested, um, the use of that evidence at his trial was unlawful under the Fourth Amendment. Um, in terms of the background facts, what happened was Riley uh, was pulled over um, during a routine traffic stop. The police stopped him because he had expired license tags. Um, when they questioned Riley, um, they determined that he was driving with a suspended license. At that time, they impounded his vehicle in compliance with local law, and upon that inventory, they discovered two loaded firearms in the hood of his car. Um, and so they then arrested him for having concealed loaded firearms. Um, at the time of his arrest, they, one of the police officers did a cursory search of his phone looking at the text messages. And in looking at those messages, he saw abbreviations that seemed to affiliate Riley to a local gang. Um, later on, after he was arrested, about two hours later at the station house, one of the um, gang officers, uh, an officer who was an expert um, in gangs in the local area, then did a much fuller search of his cell phone, um, looked at the digital um, content, including pictures and videos. And during that search, he discovered a couple of photos of Riley. Um, in one of the photos, it appeared he was making gang signs. There also was a red Oldsmobile in the uh, photograph that was believed to have been involved in a previous shooting. Um, it turns out that the guns that were found in Riley's car also were connected to that shooting. Um, in addition, there was video on the phone um, where essentially uh, the uh, individuals were engaged what's called street boxing. Um, and in those videos, although Riley was not engaged in the boxing, um, he made comments that could have affiliated him with being a part of a gang as well. So the question was whether the use of the photographs that were found during the search two hours later after the arrest and the use of the video uh, was a violation of Riley's rights um, when it was used at trial. So really what's at issue here is whether the search of that cell phone was or came under the category of what's called the search incident to arrest doctrine. So generally speaking, any time the police conduct a search without a warrant, that is deemed per se unreasonable. However, the Supreme Court has said that when a person is lawfully arrested, they may conduct a search incident to arrest of the person. And this can be a full search. So for example, if they discover someone's wallet, they can look inside the wallet at that time without a warrant. And there are essentially two justifications for allowing this type of warrantless search that were expressed in the Chimel opinion um, a few decades ago. So the first justification is this idea that we need to allow officers to protect themselves. Um, the idea that a, an individual could have weapons on his person that could harm the officer and others. And the second justification um, is the idea that we don't want to allow suspects to be able to destroy evidence. So one argument that Riley's attorneys are presenting is that these justifications simply don't apply when it comes to the digital content of one's phone. I mean, on the one hand, it's certainly not a danger to the police officer, any contents in the phone. And in terms of the risk of destruction of evidence, I mean, there is a potential possibility with respect to some smartphones, which is what Riley had in this case, that evidence could be um, destroyed remotely. Um, however, there are ways to prevent this. In terms of, yes, even though we have this general justification uh, with respect to searching the person, um, it really doesn't apply, according to Riley's attorneys, when it comes to cell phones. Now, related to that is this question of, is the search of a cell phone the same as the search of one's wallet? Um, or a cigarette pack, which is what is, was at issue in the Robinson case several years ago. Um, because 
you know, to search one's wallet, that's a finite amount of material that's going to be found there. But when we start talking about smartphones, we're talking about email communication, personal photos, personal video, the level of intrusiveness of one's privacy is much greater when we start talking about technology like smartphones versus one's pockets and other types of containers that a person might hold. And so because the level of intrusiveness is so much greater, um, Riley's attorneys and many other organizations who are concerned about privacy rights have argued that cell phones should be treated differently when we're trying to weigh the level of intrusiveness versus the reasonableness of a search without a warrant. So those are essentially the legal issues in this case. And I think it really is gonna come down to this question of how the court is going to treat technology and the advancement of technology um, and, and how we should treat that under the Fourth Amendment.